Yo, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you for clicking on today's video. Now, yes, we've got another video about Red Dead Redemption 2. Finally, I've had a lot of requests asking me to give my overall thoughts on the game. If I think it's the best game of all time, which many critics and many people on Metacritic are saying that Red Dead Redemption 2 is flawless, it's the best game of all time. I'll just answer that right now. It's not the best game of all time, but it's a damn good game. I'll tell you what I like, what I don't like, what I think desperately needs improving. And we've not actually had the release of multiplayer yet, so I can't comment on that. But it should be released within the next week, because we're going to hit the end of November. And Rockstar promised we'd have it by the end of November. So let's hope that Red Dead 2 Online is better than GTA 5 Online, because that is just a pay-to-win bullshit mess. So let's have a look at the only two sites I truly trust with reviews. That is Open Critic and Metacritic. So what these do is they gather a host of user scores and critic scores and bundle them together to give it an overall score. On Open Critic, it's the highest rated game of 2018, rocking a 97 rating from critics. That rating is from critics and a user score of 92. So there's not that much of a discrepancy between what critics have said and what users have said. Now, if you go over to Metacritic, you're going to see a bit of a bigger discrepancy than you see over there. It's still the highest rated PlayStation 4 game of all time with a 97 critic rating. But then when you go over to the user side, you see a bit of a, a big jump. The user score is 7.8. Now, this kind of just proves the point even more that some critics can be purchased off and they give big studios like Rockstar and Bethesda a pass. The same was said with Fallout 76. Some, I'm not even going to say, some critics were giving that like 9s and 8s out of 10s when it's a buggy, absolute pile of shit in its current state and users have voiced their opinion on that. And I think that's like the lowest rated game of 2018 on Metacritic and Open Creek via user scores. Critic scores, they're less harsh on it and they don't critique everything that needs to be critiqued. And I myself am somewhere in between. Red Dead Redemption 2 is a great game. It's one of the best I've ever played. But to give it a 10 out of 10 rating is just unrealistic. There's so many bugs and stupid things that need to be fixed in this game. And in my opinion, it's too realistic. It just takes realism in some points to ridiculous standards. And then some things are just so unrealistic, it makes no sense. Some things are so hyper-realistic, like if you walk into somebody and you just happen to butt shoulders with them, like, what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Do you want to go? Do that again. And they get really aggressive and the friends punch you. And that's not something I want to play in video games. I don't want to have to check where I'm walking and waddle through a fucking town centre or city centre because I'm scared of bumping shoals with someone. Because then if they attack me and I attack them back, I'm going to get wanted and then I'm going to get in trouble for disturbing the peace. This has happened to me countless times in San Dini. I've, I've, I've lost track and it just makes the game fucking irritating. And for that reason alone, I wouldn't be able to give it a 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10 means the game's perfect and there's nothing you could change. One thing I want to point out here with the critic reviews and their so-called perfect scores is just how hypocritical they are. They don't mention in any of these reviews how bad the control scheme is in Red Dead Redemption 2. It's one of the worst I've ever played and Rockstar just don't improve it. It's like the same control scheme as GTA 5 which is 5 years old. They haven't changed it in any way, shape or form, it's still just awful. Trying to use this, trying to play this on a controller, it's just not fun. It actually ruined my experience somewhat until I got like six, seven hours in and finally got used to the pathetic controls. I found myself in the setting menu and changing the sensitivity and changing the bullshit acceleration for like three hours. I was in the menu every damn 30 minutes because I just couldn't get used to the controls. I was on Reddit and there was tons of other people complaining about the same thing. But these critics ignore that. But then these critics critiqued The Witcher 3 for its control scheme. Now the exact same critics, I've been looking at some of them on Metacritic. Critics which gave Witcher 3 8 and 9s out of 10. And they said it was purely because the control scheme wasn't good enough. It just didn't feel responsive enough. I can bet my house on it that Witcher 3's control scheme is 100 times better than Red Dead Redemption 2's, and this is just everybody's bias for Rockstar shining through. 
The Witcher 3 is rocking a 92 score on Metacritic via critics and a 92 score via users. Whereas the user score for this game is 78. There's a massive discrepancy in the user score on this and the user score on The Witcher 3 compared to the critics. The, the users and the critics agreed on The Witcher 3 that it was a 92. Whereas the critics and users disagreed on this. I would probably say I'd give this an 8 out of 10. It could be a 9 out of 10 if the multiplayer is good and they improve the control schemes. But I don't think Rockstar will do that. I think they're going to milk the multiplayer and bang it with tons of microtransactions. Maybe not straight away, but over the next year, they'll do it. They did it to Grand Theft Auto V, the multiplayer and that. It was okay when it first came out. There was not many microtransactions. Then about two years down the line, it just became pay-to-win bullshit and a quick way for Rockstar to make easy money. Enough of the multiplayer talk aside, let's actually talk about the things that are so frustrating in this game. Now, I know Rockstar are proud of the world they've made. Graphically, it looks amazing. The only other game I can compare to this, what I've played on PlayStation 4, is The Witcher 3. They both have some of the best graphics I've ever seen on a console. It'll look even better when it comes to PC and could probably surpass The Witcher 3's graphics. But so many annoyances. The biggest one for me is when you go into the camp and you have to walk so slow you can't run around in the camp and this is Rockstar saying fucking admire this fucking camp we've made admire this place that we've handcrafted and built I don't wanna I wanna run back get some ammunition and go back out and fight or run back change my clothes or shave and go back out and fight why do you force me to fucking basically crawl through the camp or I've just took back some skins for Piers Pearson to craft me a satchel I can't fucking do that without being so frustrated and annoyed that I am walking like a fucking slug or sliding along like a slug. And this still hasn't been updated. The game's been out a month and I thought they've took this out. Apparently not. You go inside, you've got to walk slow. You go inside any building, you've got to walk slow. You go into any camp, no matter where your camp moves around the map, you've got to go slow. Why? It makes no fucking sense. Now one of my next big annoyances is just so frustrating. I've mentioned this in a video prior and I mentioned it as Red Dead Redemption 2's biggest problem and it's definitely up there as one of the biggest problems in this game. This is where Rockstar, I think, they want to make the game just too realistic. Either that or they just thought security cameras existed in 1898, I think the game's set. Why? Why? When you kill somebody, just, just answer me this. You kill somebody in the middle of the woods, there's nobody around. Hey, before someone leaves a smart ass comment, well, there might have been someone there. No, I checked. I've checked hundreds of times. I've killed somebody and someone's coming to investigate. I've done it silently, tied them up and stabbed them to death. Someone's going to investigate. Why? You know, they're just people sat in trees watching for murders and then, I don't know, throwing a fucking paper airplane to the authorities. It is so annoying. And they punish you for being an outlaw. They really do punish you for being an outlaw. If you make that choice, you're going to get the worst ending in the game. Now, I know this is probably what they wanted. They wanted to punish you for being an outlaw. And they want you to be a good guy. But how can you be a good guy when the whole concept of the game is being a bad man, a cowboy, and an outlaw? But yet, in the same breath of air, you get penalised at every single turn for being an outlaw. You want to kill somebody? Go ahead, kill him. You're going to lose your honour. But then if you do want to play as an outlaw, and you're like, I don't care what happens. I want the worst ending possible. Some of the missions towards the later end of the game will just boost your honour by like 35%. So no matter how bad you've played, your honour's near enough going to be full at the end of the game, meaning you will get the supposed good ending. I don't know who thought of these ideas at Rockstar. But please, just fix them in an update. Now, I know you can't fix the ending of the game in an update, so to speak. But fix the honor system. I mentioned this in my last video last month. The honor system in this game is broken. Ghost Witnesses is the most annoying thing I've ever encountered in a game. And I thought they'd have fixed this from the first Red Dead Redemption, which is over seven years old. But no. No, they haven't fixed it. Why not? Why have you not fixed it, Rockstar? We're on a new generation of consoles and still the same old shit, so you can't blame the hardware. 
Now, don't get my complaints twisted. I still love the game and it's still great to play and I've still put in over 65 hours into this game and I'm still finding new things to do. I've completed the main story, but when you've completed the main story, you've got two sort of closing chapters, I guess you could call them, to play and they're pretty fun to play as and the voice acting in this game is the best I've ever heard. The characters are written fantastically and you get attached to each character which is what you should do in video games. I'm sick of games coming out and you just don't give a shit about the characters. You're like, oh they died, oh they died. You don't see no soaps, no Captain Prices, no ghosts, no characters which draw you in, no Nico Bellics. Characters in games now are just, they're just, they're not written with any heart or any care. In this game, Rockstar Show, they still care about how the characters are written and how they come across. And Arthur Morgan is possibly the best character Rockstar have ever created and the voice acting for Arthur Morgan is fantastic and I believe is a better character than John. Now I know that'll cause some controversy in the comments. I prefer him to John. The amount of times in this game he saves John from himself and he looks after John's kid more than fucking John does. He's a better father to John's kid and he's like a dad around camp which just makes you like Arthur Morgan even more and it makes it even sadder because you know how the Vandaline gang ends. It made me feel so bad for the characters knowing that John is hunting certain characters down in the first Red Dead Redemption which he classed as family members in this game and you see how much they get torn apart as the game gradually goes on and that is done in the best way I've ever seen character development in any game ever done and I'll give Rockstar the props on that. In the prologue at the beginning of the game you hear Javier say I need to go and look for John he's my brother he'd come looking for me and it kind of made me upset because I'm like yeah he does come looking for you he comes looking for you in the first game and he, and he wants to fucking kill you and just seeing that they had such this such close bond and it all just fizzles and then leads on to the first Red Dead Redemption game it brings a tear to your eye lads, it really does. Now with many of the negatives I've mentioned in this video, if they were addressed this game would easily be like a 9.5 out of 10 and that's with that's without multiplayer. This just proves single player games aren't dead, this will be the best selling game of this year by a massive margin so fuck you EA for cancelling what could have been an amazing Star Wars game because you said single player games were dead. Well this single player game as it stands right now is destroying Battlefield 5 in sales numbers, so fuck yourselves EA, fuck yourselves. Now one major annoyance for me which led to the game being spoiled for myself was that you can't visit the map from the previous game until you've completed the game and I googled this, I was just seeing if you could get to the map and I saw a massive spoiler. Why did Rockstar not clarify this? When you get the game and you open the box to get the disc out there's the map which comes in every Rockstar game you open the map you look at the back you're like oh that's that's the old map I want to go and visit there well you can't you can't visit there you, you, you can't until you've completed the main story so don't bother googling it because you'll get some massive massive spoilers I don't know why you can't go there until you finish the main story I guess that you can't go to Blackwater because of all the shit that's gone on but the rest of the map you can't go in I mean, you can go in but you're gonna die within a minute because you're just gonna get hunted down by law and killed so don't think you can go and explore the previous map until you finish the main story which is going to take you around 50 hours unless you just absolutely rush through the story alone but you can't there's too many things to do in this game i found myself engrossed in hunting wanting the best satchels wanting the best clothes hunting is so addicting in this game and killing the legendary animals which is another way that you're going to find a spoiler don't Google legendary animal locations and click onto any video because you will see a huge spoiler. Avoid it. Avoid it to death. If you're going to do that, just look at Google Images. Don't watch the fucking videos. That is my advice to you unless you finish the game. Now that brings me to the side quest in this game. There is hundreds. Absolutely hundreds and it doesn't matter when you do them. There's a couple set missions um, you do for a nun in San Denis, if you do them, you will get a slightly different end mission than if you don't do them. If you do, you'll see her later on in the mission. If you don't, you'll see Reverend Swanson. That's the only mission that I could find that 
impacted how the story played out in terms of stranger missions you can do any of the other stranger missions whenever you want it doesn't make a damn difference which is great uh, to get 100% completion I believe you've only got to do like 18 stranger missions but there is like I think there's over 90 stranger missions so once you've completed the game you're gonna have shit loads of stuff to do you can hunt the animals do the stranger missions you'll still get the strange side encounters there's tons of stuff to do in this game and the main story is a long one the main story has around 80 missions which is I think 10 more than Grand Theft Auto 5 and some of them are broken up so you have to do a set amount of activities in that area before you can proceed with the main story which is how I believe games should let you do missions because if not people just speed run through a game and try and spoil it for everyone else now in terms of how the game is broken up I'd recommend doing as many stranger missions if you're wanting to complete as many side missions as possible in chapter 3 once you get past chapter 3 it all just goes on a roller coaster ride once you get past that you're gonna wanna just do the main missions as fast as possible I found myself doing so many side missions up until I completed chapter 3 and then after that I just wanted to progress with the main story as fast as I can and that's my advice to everybody watching this video if you do that you'll end up the same as me you'll want to progress through the main story as fast as possible so you can get back to doing the side missions because the game it heats up after you've completed chapter 3 and you're just going, you're just going to want to speed through it after then if you like me and all this suspense is getting to you and the story is really heating up because the, for the first two chapters the story is really slow get yourself buckled in because the first couple of chapters are damn slow but when it speeds up oh lord does it speed up now I've had to give this game a rating out of 10 like I said it'd probably be an 8.5 that rating could be subject to go up depending on how good the online is if the online's great I'll make another updated video just focusing on the online but if you've got a console Xbox PlayStation it doesn't matter one thing that really annoys me though is that it's not available on PC don't get it twisted, this game will definitely be available for PC by next year. There's too much money that Rockstar could potentially miss if they don't bring it to PC market. And me being a PC player, I've gone out of my way to buy it on PlayStation 4. And I haven't bought a PlayStation 4 game in over a year. That's how much pull and how much sway Rockstar have. If you're, you're holding out because you're like, oh, I want a PC copy, be prepared to wait. But this game... You can't miss it. The story is fantastic. You've got to play it. There's tons of glaring bugs which need addressing though. And we need to stop giving a rock star a pass on this. Same with Bethesda. Those two studios, I don't know why, they get a pass on absolutely everything. It's probably because they make the best open world games. But still, stop giving them a pass. The game is fantastic. I'd give it an 8.5. And anyway lads, if you did enjoy the video, smash thumbs up let me know what you want me to cover next in the comment section below if you disagree with me and you think i'm a dick hit dislike and let me know why in the comments below red dead redemption 2 don't miss it if you've got a console please go and buy this game go and rent this game just don't miss playing this game right lads i love you all and i will see you all in the next one peace Never found. I met her at my show, then we smashed right after. If we go three rounds, then she fall in love faster. Very next morning, I'm Casper in another city for a show somewhere.